another contentious issue, when to castrate. Okay, so let's say we want to castrate, but when to castrate. And this is where it gets a little bit contentious as well. So um, what we do know is testosterone is uh, integral or needed for growing. Okay, um, so my usual advice is depends on, I'll ask, why do you want to castrate first? Okay, and usually it's because some owners will either go, oh, I've always wanted to castrate, or all my dogs have been castrated in the past, I just want to do that because that is the normal and I'm happy with that belief and expectation and continue with life. Okay, fine. So, then my question would be, okay, how, or, or, or the other way is someone will say, I, I don't want to castrate. I say, fine, you know. Uh, as long as you accept the risk for the prostate issues, testicular cancer, which is 2%, um, then fine, as long as you're happy. Because a well-balanced dog that doesn't show any aggression, I've seen plenty of well-balanced dogs when they're 15, 16, 17 year old, not castrated, what am I going to say? <laughs> a bad owner. No, it's a, it's a, every dog is different. So usually my advice would be, if you want to castrate, it depends on the dog. Okay, If it is huge, Six months old is huge, aggressive, humping everything, spraying everywhere, driving everybody crazy, and it's a good size already, then you may want to consider castration because you don't want to get it any bigger and you're wanting to stop all this unwanted behavior. But if it's quite well-mannered, it's still quite small, you want to grow a little bit, it's not humping everything, it's not really spraying everywhere, you want to get castrated, you can wait till they're maybe nine, ten months of age, give it a little bit longer to sort of grow. Um, I stop and that is just my personal um, um, uh, experience. I stop at one year of age because in my experience, after that, whatever unwanted behavior you think you're gonna get rid of, it, uh, a lot of them has become learned behavior. So by the time they're 15 months, humping everything and just spraying everywhere and you're coming and say that, uh, let's I'm gonna get it castrated because it's doing all that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I can castrate, <laughs> but it may not change anything. I always give that caveat. Whereas before one year of age, it's more likely that it's just hormonal based. It's not become a learned behavior yet. And hence I said, yeah, we can castrate it. Let it grow a little bit bigger. It's not aggressive. You, you know, you don't play a little puppy, you know, you let it grow a little bit bigger. Let's do it 10 months, 11 months, so to speak. So that isn't really a fixed rule. It depends on situation to situation. Do you see what I mean? Because if it is six months or seven months, huge Labrador already, and it's just bouncing everywhere, just humping everything. And you know, in the end, as much as we talk about pets, we also talk about what's happening at home. If you've got kids and things like that, you have to sort of work around what is best for everybody really in terms of quality of life. Then say, yeah, maybe it's good to castrate, then calm it down a little bit. It's huge, right? don't grow any big anyway. And so those are the considerations. Does it make sense? But certainly I've got owners who say, I don't castrate my dog at all. It's a well, nice, balanced dog. I say, fine, I'm not going to push it. Because the risk of things happening, testicular cancer, 2%. In my experience, I've seen so many male entire dogs in their older age without testicular cancer that I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna push that if I don't really see that often, okay. Prostate issues is present. So I've seen plenty of older dogs, usually between seven to 10 years old, they get prostate issues because they're not castrated. It well could be BPH. At the point in time, we consider castration. The castrate goes down and everything goes back to normal. So same again. Um, just because it happens doesn't mean that I will talk about castration for every single dog, so to speak. Uh, prostate cancer, whole different ball game. Lock of draw is one of those things whereby you may get it even when you're castrated or not. I get a lot of my information from my own personal experience and also I speak to this uh, Professor Gary England who is, the, who is the reproductive guy in UK. He is the Dean of uh, Nottingham University, who, and uh, he used to be my lecturer back in RVC. So I'm always sending him emails to say, that, can you give me the update on <laughs> the latest thinking? <laughs> and, uh, and that's what he comes up with. So interestingly, prostate cancer is more malignant, or it's, likely, it's more likely to be malignant in castrated males than uncastrated males. So when I first read it, I'm like, that's weird. Then you, th then you read a little bit more, there's a problem with data, you gotta read it a little bit more. Of course it is, because in, un in uncastrated males, most of them have got BPH. So if you put proportion, example, you get a hundred dogs that's castrated, okay? So BPH maybe occurs in 75, and 25% is uh, prostate cancer. So you say the incidence of prostate cancer is 25%, okay? You get a hundred dogs that's not castrated, 
Okay, BPH, uh, so, um, yeah, sorry, B, um, 100 dogs that's castrated. Okay, so the first group was not castrated. So not castrated, hence, higher chance of BPH. Castrated, very, very little chance of BPH. And you get maybe um, whatever lump there is, you couldn't even the prostate, is more likely to be prostate cancer <laughs> than not. Now, obviously, it just suddenly blow the whole thing out of proportion. But because when it is uncastrated, BPH is more common. Castrated BPH is not common. So it just makes the whole number looks bigger when it's not. Does it make sense?